Good morning and welcome to the Core Commerce webinar for December 1st, 2020. Today's topic is COVID-19 and the holiday season. Um, just gonna touch a little bit on the pandemic that we've all been dealing with this year and what that means um, for the upcoming holiday sales season, which of course is so important to everybody, but um, gonna take on an even more important meaning for online businesses this year. And we're just gonna talk a little bit about that. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Chris Graffinino. I am the COO of Core Commerce. I've been in the e-commerce space since 2003. And I started in sales and support and have done a little bit of everything. So getting into our topic of today is, you know, so we'll start off by let's talk just for a moment about how COVID-19 has affected brick and mortar sales. Of course, we all know that um, once the pandemic started, cities started locking down uh, and forcing businesses to have to close their doors and only accept online orders. And um, if you're in the restaurant industry or the food industry, you can only accept items that were potentially takeout orders and things of that nature. So um, it severely handcuffed your ability to sell, especially if you were highly dependent on people being in your establishment to buy things, for example, restaurant or a clothing shop, um, you know, those types of things. So those lockdowns caused a lot of problems for people to try to run their business uh, without being able to have people actually come into their store and buy stuff. You know, we've had to limit our access, you know, either by limiting your hours of operation, you know, we're only open four hours a day instead of eight, uh, or, you know, limiting the amount of people and loud, and loud inside, whether if you were even allowed to, to have any people inside at all, you know, in some cases, um, depending on where you are, you were not even allowed to have anybody in your store. Um, in other cases, of course, maybe it's limited to 25% capacity. So in either case, you're well below what you're used to as far as um, foot traffic coming in. So you have to, to think out of the box and try to figure out how can we make money without people being allowed to come into our establishment which is what we're used to. Of course, um, the side effect, the, the horrible negative side effect of all this is so the businesses were not able to do that. They were not able to um, operate at 25% capacity or operate online only. And they didn't get enough business that way. And of course they had to end up closing their business and um, some businesses are, you know, are in that position still now where they haven't had to shut down yet, but. Um, you know, if we have to end up locking down a second time, that, that very well could happen to a lot of businesses as well. And of course, it's, you know, if you have lack of revenue, you end up having to fur furlough employees or let employees go because you can't pay them. And if you don't have a way to start to recruit some of that money, it, you may not be able to afford to pay people to come back. And then therefore you can't reopen and, you know, it's just a big mess of stuff. So who, who is being affected mostly by this? Um, so, you know, younger people, um, according to studies online um, that I researched for this, are, are way more aware um, and affected by the pandemic uh, emotionally and psychologically and tend to buy online at a very high clip and the number has skyrocketed um, to, I believe it's even in the 90th percentile of people who are 21 and under. Doing the majority of their shopping on through their phone online, um, not going places. Um, older people, and I'll put older in quotes, you know, people who are 35 and older, um, who are not in that millennial uh, age group, and older, you know, um, they've less been less likely to change their habits. There has been a change, um, but it's more in the 20 to 25 percent range where, you know, people who are 35 and, or my age, which is mid, you know, mid forties um, are in a situation where, you know, they, they're not as, I guess, afraid um, to, to kind of go out in public and they're less affected emotionally by it. Um, it doesn't mean they don't take it as seriously. I guess in some cases it does. 
people probably don't think it's it's as bad as it as it might be or might not be. Um, but uh, millennials definitely think the the significance of the virus and protecting themselves is much more important, and so they're much more likely to buy online than than people who are a little older. Um, so for businesses like like yours. Um, the solution is we've got to figure out how to get people to buy online even more than they do today, right? Whether, you know, that's opening an online store if you've never had one before or doing some additional marketing to, to make sure you, your business is um, seen, you know, online. You know, you may have been in a position before the pandemic to where maybe 5% of 10% of your sales came online. And now you're hoping to make it 100% of your sales are online, right? But you don't want the revenue drop off. So how do you increase your online sales 20 times over, um, you know, to try to cover the, the revenue loss you're expecting um, from, from the pandemic and the restrictions on people being able to come into your business, right? So um, the big side effect, obviously, you know, buying online even more has has spurred these industries that were already getting pretty popular they've really just skyrocketed um as a result of what's going on with the pandemic right so it's whether it's a grocery delivery service um or picking up your groceries at walmart outside of the outside of the establishment versus having to go in and shop right um, i know walmart does it kroger does it target does it um, food delivery services like Uber Eats and Grubhub and Postmates have all exploded, right? Because people are staying home and ordering food as opposed to going out and picking it up, which might save them a few dollars, but it's worth three or four extra dollars to have somebody bring it to them, right? Um, Amazon obviously has skyrocketed. People were already using Amazon a ton, and that just went up even more. And just buying things online in general, even if it's not from Amazon, just being willing to go to websites and purchase from them um, versus, oh, I'll go buy the version that I see at the store at Walmart. I'll go buy the version, you know, because I don't want to actually go in the business. And so, you know, tying it into where we're at now in the calendar, right, with the holiday season, what is you know, how is this Christmas season going to be affected by COVID-19? Well, as we could prob probably estimate, right, online sales are going to probably be higher this year than, than were potentially anticipated at the end of last year, right? Um, 2020 was going to be bigger than 2019 anyway, but it's probably going to be even bigger than was originally anticipated due to, you know, of course, everybody wanting to stay home. Online purchasing was already growing um, and the pandemic just kind of injected um, for lack of a better term you know just it just made that made that possibility skyrocket made it much more convenient and beneficial you know from an emotional standpoint to, to buy online and not have to be around people not have to worry about socially being socially distant and wearing a mask around people you can just stay home and order right so now it's even more convenient um to do that than it ever was previously um so one thing as, as an online store merchant using a, using the core commerce platform that you can do is if you don't do it already, you know, by, by switching and offering free shipping, um, you know, the, many people love Amazon because they can do free shipping all the time. So if you can find a way to incorporate that concept into what you sell, whether, you know, let's say you, you increase all the prices of all your products by one or two bucks and then do free shipping or you know whatever you whatever the mode is free shipping if you spend over 50 bucks free shipping if you spend over 40 bucks um doing anything like that to minimize the shipping and giving people shipping for free is is more convenient and economical uh decision for you as a business owner versus you know lowering the margins on the items you sell right um, and people see that free shipping and they tend to you know getting a product for 48 dollars instead of 52 dollars isn't as big of a mental win for me as a consumer versus, oh, I didn't have to pay the $10 shipping, right? Even though you're only talking a couple of dollars difference, right? Even if the dollar amount was the same, you know, me paying $50 for an item versus $60 for an item doesn't have the the adrenaline rush or the uh, the, the, 
the emotional benefit of having a ten dollar shipping become zero and now i see that zero there and like oh i didn't have to pay anything for shipping well in the end you know obviously it was the same price right you still spent 60 bucks but um but you feel like you got a better deal by getting the shipping for free so if you don't do that it's something i would strongly consider um at least offering even if it's just during the holiday season to try to um, entice more people to buy directly from you versus you know just going to the big boxes like amazon and stuff and doing online and social selling through Facebook and and Instagram or, or other ways, you know, obviously to, you know, if it's something you don't do already, it's something you should be doing. It's something that you should do now, um, not even just because of the pandemic, but, uh, you know, the, the route that a lot of us are forced to take because of the pandemic should, you know, if that's what gets you on board with doing this stuff, then you know, so be it, but you should be doing this probably going forward anyway, if you don't already. And that's having a Facebook business page and that's having a, a business profile on Instagram where you can share products or your pictures and then you can pay to market, um, you know, your products on those platforms. And then people see your feed and see one of your products. And there's a shop now link you can click on, for example, on Instagram, and that will take you where you need to go to buy that item, right? through the Instagram browser that exists or, you know, however you want to do it. But, um, but taking advantage of those platforms just gets your product out in front of more people because then you can, um, you know, you can spend $5 to have uh, a marketing for a single product for a couple of days on Instagram and then use hashtags all over the place to hope so people can potentially find it. And then people who may not have ever realized you existed previously, you know, happen to stumble across because they just happened to search one of the hashtags you had used. So um, it's a very valuable tool. And if, like I said, if it's something you don't do today, you should. And, but with the pandemic, you should for sure uh, take, try to find every nook and cranny of what you can do as far as selling online compared to, you know, the business or the revenue you might lose by having people come into the business directly. And with that, of course, we're going to, you know, I would expect to see a bump in online traffic um, on a lot of our sites around the internet because of the pandemic, which you were used to getting during the holiday season. You know, you might see that tick up some um, just with more people being at home or people, you know, not able to come into your business directly. And if you're a hundred percent online business, obviously you, you would just expect things to get a little busier than normal. Hopefully, hopefully that's always the case, but um, yeah, so, you know, obviously the pandemic has been a big hindrance and, and something we all need to take seriously and be um, and be aware of and make sure that we're, we're taking the right precautions. And But with all that said, you know, of course, we have rules that we're um, required to follow with as far as running our businesses and running running in person establishments. And, um, you know, if whether you agree with them or you don't, you know, that's the, the rules are or what they are. And so we have to figure out the best way to work with them to make sure we're making money. So with that said, um, that's the end of my presentation. I appreciate everyone jumping in today. If there's any questions, uh, I'll take them outside of, uh, outside of the presentation. Um, but out, other than that, I appreciate everyone's time today and have a great day. Take care.